Yo, 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 what is up, fuckers? Welcome back to another episode of the Pillar of Thriller. I'm Justin. I'm Romo. What is up? We are in a different situation here. No, neither of us have COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, we are actually both in a, a baby situation. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I just uh, picked one up off the street. Yeah. Justin actually did the nine month thing. So I just found mine on the black market. That's how it goes. Yeah. Well, you got a baby puppers. I do. So, yeah. So, basically, Justin had his kid. So, congrats to Justin. Hey, got man. his little jacks laying over there. Yeah. Um, and then my, I have a 10-week-old puppy, and he cannot be left alone for longer than, like, an hour right now. So, he is – and that's pushing it. And he's asleep right now. Otherwise, I'd show him. Y'all will see him. But Yeah, uh, Jack is asleep as well. So, if you hear crying, it's because he woke up or some shit. Yeah. So. If – this is perfectly time. He just fell asleep, so he's got like 30, 40 minutes before he goes buck wild. Is that so, his uh is that his uh like sleeping arrangement? He'll go 30, 40 and then go crazy. It, he'll, 30, 40. During the day he takes longer naps. So that's a cool thing. So he's all set. Cool. But we're here to push some content out anyway. We uh we both were dying to see the cursed in twenty twenty two. Um, we loved the trailer. We had the trailer reaction. Um, so if you haven't seen the movie, um, I say go watch the trailer, then go watch the movie or go into the movie blind, however you want to do it. The movie was a pleasant surprise. Um, Justin, uh, watched it the other day and I watched it like a day or two before him. Um, just cause we were both excited. I saw it was on rent and <clears throat> we were pumped cause we were like, we got to cover this now. And so that's why we're, we're coming to y'all virtually trying to get this done for y'all talk about our thoughts and just we don't want to hope for this so we don't want to miss out on content just because we got babies in the house no no no, hell no you know what i'm saying so we just gotta we do what we do yeah and we're like halfway to halloween now so it's like hopefully stuff ramps up because like we had scream in january but like there's not a ton of con there's stuff that's out but yeah there's more stuff we wanted to get to later yeah, well, you know, life happens too, so it is what it is. Yeah, you got a whole baby, so. Oh yeah, got you got a whole puppy. <laughs> so, cool. Yeah, good guy with the blue eyes too. He's got cute blue eyes. He's cute as puppy. He is cute. So yeah. it'll be cool. Jax will play with him. It'll be a good time. It will be when he's not nipping and biting everything. Yeah, it's all right. It is. Well, before Should we, we kick off this episode like we yeah, always man, do? Yeah, let's, man, let's, let's chug our, our beers. Do you want to toast our sponsors first? Yes, let's do that. Kosi Jude Chima, thank you for this wonderful logo for our banners. <laughs> yeah. Uh, boring underscore Millie, follow him on IG. You already know. Uh, uh, Brandon Jack, just kicking it. Drop us out. Here. Some shorts, y'all. They're fire. Oh. They're fire. It's almost summertime. Get you them shorts. Get your merch. Sure. Get your yeah. merch. Um, Eric from He's Crafty. Mm-hmm. Gotta shout him out. Our That's guy. my dude. And um, Megan Velasquez from Han Junkies. As always, the support they give us astronomical. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Um, with that said, let's chug our beers, man. Uh. It's a, I've been drinking already kind of today, so. Um, well, I got IPA, so this one and another one should do me good for this episode. Cheers, brother. Cheers. IPAs are so heavy. I got another one over Ooh. here. I got another one. I got a glass. I got a sipper over here. Ooh, that IPA, that's going to sit terribly in my stomach. Terribly. Just going to be in knots all night. This feels like Mike Tyson's just throwing left and right jabs at the stomach, trying to be talking about some horror movies with that going on. That's a lot. But we're going to push through, Justin, because we always do. Isn't that right? We always do. Never. Yeah. yeah. Always, always, always. So, man, let's, let's set the stage for the cursed 2022 Anytime I'm looking this movie up or trying to find out more about it, obviously I always get The Curse, which came out in 2010. And I'm like, no, I'm looking for The Curse 2022. 
Yeah. Which is, and I won't get to spoiler yet, um, but it's a horror folklore, late 1800s. Movie starts off like beginning 1900s, and then we get like a 30 years back um, to help set the stage and connect some stuff towards the end of the movie. But basically, um, I didn't know what to make of this when we saw the trailer, right? We're watching it. There's like a scarecrow in the trailer. Excuse me. There's my burp. Um, There's a creature running around. So we know that it's late 1800s. They're scared of a creature that's killing all these people and no one knows what's happening. You see Duba Fangs in the trailer. Don't know what's going on, Um, but it looks, I didn't know how you were going to feel about this one because you didn't like the witch. So I didn't know how you were going to feel about this one. And I'll let you expand on that. Mm. But with this being folklore, kind of it's slow burn territory we're in slow burn territory scenes are lit with candles and natural lighting um there's a lot of stuff in there i was curious what you were gonna think about the language so these are all things we talked about but i'm, I'm just covering all the things i was thinking about but yeah. i want first thoughts from you before i go too deep it was straight like it wasn't like my my Didn't live up to your expectations yeah, it was it wasn't good, but it wasn't like bad, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I think it was just right in the middle, you know. Because prior to the, uh, I think the first I actually ever heard of this was he just randomly popped up on my Twitter feed. Mm-hmm. I didn't know. Yeah, trailer did right. Yeah, it was yeah. just so random, and I was like, I actually didn't hear about it. I didn't know anything about it, and then I, mm-hmm. of course. If something like that pops up on my Twitter feed, I'm gonna watch the trailer, and uh, oh, yeah. yes. and um, so I like I had high hopes even with the setting because you could tell in the um, in the trailer how they were gonna look and like in what setting it would be because of how they were dressed. Yep. So um, and I kind of knew ahead of time it was gonna be the kind of the same type of uh, setting as the mm-hmm. witch. Um, I know Boston absolutely loved that movie. Stephen King has even yeah. said something about like how it's one of the scariest films he's ever seen. Mm-hmm. Um, it, but uh, and know, uh, one thing to note, just while you're while we're talking about like the setting and like the vibe and stuff like that with the witch, uh, let's put it out there that the witch is like mid to early 1600s, right? And this is late 1800s. So once I saw that. Yeah, so you didn't get as much old English in this one, yeah. right? No, um, which was cool with me. Yeah, you were cool with it because you're yeah. like, I, I want to know what the fuck they're saying. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and um, and it, yeah, it, I think it was just right. I mean, yeah, it didn't it didn't blow your socks off. It wasn't really like I'm, I'm telling all y'all. Justin was so this and Black Phone were the two that Justin was like, like I can't wait to see, like, yeah. dying to see. I hope you don't have similar man feeling about black phone yeah um, but this well, he, uh he's never disappointed me even in moon Knight, like i just you know even two episodes in i gotta his, watch episode two tonight okay yeah yeah so i like he's even hawk never disappoints like i don't think yeah. he's ever but like i don't think i've ever uh like seen a bad ethan hawk movie like mm-hmm. yeah but, i agree at least horror wise he's, like, he's fan i mean he falls like in that category of just finding that that niche with uh with some horror movies and playing roles and really transforming himself into those roles, so it's great. And um, he kind of plays that in um, Moon Knight too. Right? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's I can't I can't wait to see where that goes. Um, but with character like representation for characters like John McBride, Seamus Laurent, that are the character names of two of the main people in this movie. Excuse me, Seamus being the father, John McBride being the guy that comes in to kind of help them with the monster situation. Um, they do a great job of embodying that late 1800s. I obviously wasn't alive then, but I imagine that's what it would be like. Um, so that's just what I feel. I, I felt 1800s while I was watching the movie, which is what I want. Um, but let's, let's get into a little bit of plot points, right? Yeah. So um, what, what kickstarts this movie and everything is they're stealing the uh, land from the gypsies, Right, so they're what they're going in and doing is stealing the land from the gypsies, and you get that awesome wide shot. And were they stealing that, or yeah. was that they, they were kicking? They were kicking them off. It was now, the- right? Like that was their land already, and they were just saying, "You're not, you don't belong here." Yeah, they're essentially just excavating them from this land. 
right? Mm -hmm. So where they had set up and you get this amazing wide shot that goes for like three, four minutes of uh, very far view away and you just see carnage. It just looks like you're watching a video game of like an RPG where you just sent in soldiers to fuck shit up. And that's what they're doing. You're actually seeing people lit on fire. You're seeing like horses stomp on people. Like it's brutal from yeah. afar. And that's what I appreciated about it. It wasn't like up close. I have some issues with some of the up close gore later. Um, but this was so beautifully shot in that regard. Yeah, I think they had a lot of good shots. Um, mm -hmm. I think overall as a whole, like it was like, like they were some, the acting was great. I thought, uh, uh, I actually, I, I expected that little kid to be a crucial port. Uh, I can't think, uh, to be a crucial part of this movie. I guess he kind of was. Yeah, he, he kind of was, right? Exactly. He kind of was. Yeah, but I guess like I was expecting him to be like a, like a, you're talking about the little boy, right? Yeah, I was expecting him to be a main arc of like of the, the way the trailer made it look. It, I'd, I'd argue, oh, you're talking about the one that's wearing the fangs in the trailer, yes, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. uh, yeah, but he so, died real super fast. It was, he, I love, I loved his death scene, and um, that's kind of right. Let's, let's talk about like. Dude, the scarecrow stuffing was brutal. So they kill, they have one guy and like one gypsy uh, woman that basically has the silver. They melt the silver into this molded teeth, right? And they're the so ones like, that burst the land. Yeah. And there's like engravings on the teeth and everything. Yeah. Um, so you got, they, they cut the dude's arm, uh, legs, like his feet and his hands off and stuff this man with hay. So I'm like, oh my God, they're turning this man into a scarecrow and hay, and Post him up, like, up on a post and everything. Like, he's just almost, like, he's a scarecrow. Scary as shit. Got the bag over his head. They bury the gypsy woman alive, and she's holding the, the fangs, right? Yes. Like, in a box. Well, yeah. And she talks, tells him, like, you're going to be cursed among, uh, you're going to know we're with you and everything like that. Say that right. again. I said, I said, like, basically, like, she's going to have the land cursed uh, or not, maybe not even the land cursed. I have to go back and see because I've always seen it one time. But like, she said, we're going to be cursed. We're going to stay with you and everything like that. Yes, she did say that. And I believe she did say the land. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm almost positive that that's what was said. He, uh, so it was. it's funny that we're talking about this because you're talking about him getting cut up and being stuffed. I remember texting you. I was like, this is fucking unique. Yeah, I don't think I don't think I've ever actually seen this happen. Um, unless you watch, unless you go find like some B or C level horror movie yeah. that's with a scarecrow. That that was very unique. The anytime someone's buried alive, it fucks with me. So, yeah, and I, I was I like, like and it was funny. Me and Han were watching, and they were burying her alive, and we were like, "This can't be easy to film. Like, it's just, she's just getting a bunch of dirt into her mouth. It's like, yeah, in a." The overlay of the audio while that's going on is creepy as hell because it's not like it's like the curse being done. So and um yeah, it, uh, but with that said, like when you first watch this movie, and that's how it starts, you think, oh shit, this is gonna be fucking great. Like to me, how it happened, I was set up really good setup. Yeah, and I was like, this is gonna be a fucking great movie, mm -hmm. and um it was just kind of um. I guess the right word for me would be underwhelming. It was uh, maybe because I I think for me I just had higher high very high expectations. Um, mm -hmm. But like I said, there wasn't. I don't believe there was much marketing with this movie, so I don't. Think no, so, so I don't think it's a big studio. Um, I'd have to look exactly what studio it was, but um, like it was only in theaters right at first, and then it came out on VOD fairly quickly. I paid. 20 bucks to rent it um, because it was like a theater at home type deal, which not yeah. a lot of movies do. Like um, there's a movie that's coming out. Oh, the Northman that's coming out. Robert uh, Eggers movie. Like that's only in theaters, April 22nd. I, that's not going to be available at theater at home type deal. I don't think so. Stuff like that. A great, that's going to be a great period piece. Also I'm really excited about, but this yeah. movie um, like it came out quicker than I was expecting. I was like, Oh shit, it's on rent. Let's watch it. So I wonder if it just wasn't doing great in the box office, which movies are like kind of back. I mean, movies are back, I would say. So like if it's not They're doing great in the box office, like 
that's a struggle. And this like slow burns or slow burns without a lot of backing are not going to do great in the box office, right? Someone's going to see it and be like, "Oh, bored." Well, time. yeah, because doesn't appreciate that. It of uh, like, and that's another thing, right? It, it well, actually, it's. I'm surprised that it's not doing well in theaters. If that's the case, because, um, Rotten Tomatoes for a horror has it at 74 percent. Right, pretty now. good. Yes, yeah, the audience score is higher than that too. It's pretty and, uh, good. And uh, so he, uh, unlike Morbius, that's got like 16 percent. Yeah, you know the crazy thing is, is like I kind of almost wanted to cover it. It would kind of been like a a Marvel slash horror thing we could probably do and have Mike in here for, and Oak like it would always good. Yeah, so uh, but we'll see. We'll, we'll yeah, see. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk about that later. The uh, <laughs> the uh, shit, I lost my train of thought. What were you we just saying? Talking about um, this doing well in theaters and everything like that. Just this oh. one just didn't seem to perform very well from what it seemed like to be out so early. Yeah, fuck, I still don't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> well, let me, while you're thinking about that, let me say what this movie is actually about, right? Yeah. Okay, because yeah. this caught me off guard. This is a werewolf movie. Like, that shit caught me so off guard that this is a werewolf movie. And that's what made me, I guess, I think that's what made me like it even more. Because you got, like, dog soldiers. You got. You can go back to Underworld, Werewolf and Lycans, and Vampires and stuff. But, like, I appreciated they had a different look on the werewolf. Werewolf didn't have any hair. Um, very primal. Didn't really stand up at all off two feet, which sometimes you'll see that. It was just crawling around. And they mm -hmm. do a lot of scenes like it running through the grass where you don't see it. And um, it's barely, you can, like, it's almost like you can barely. Yeah, it's just glimpses. You don't even, can't even tell what it is. It just kind of looks like a monster at first because yeah. you don't see it fully. Yeah. And, um, yeah. I, yeah. Keep going. It's, sorry. it's no, you're good. It's crazy because you were getting into you thought the kid was going to be more of a centerpiece in this movie, yep. where he's like, "Who is seeing the scarecrow in their dreams and stuff like that?" Um, and everyone raises their hand, and then he digs up the artifact, puts the teeth in, and then ends up biting somebody. Um, and then that's how things kind of get kick started, right? Yeah. Someone gets bit, they turn into the they, he bites the kid, um, the young kid, um, yeah. Seamus's youngest son, and. Um, he turns into a werewolf, uh, but they're like, the kid is still there. It's just in like it's inside of the werewolf, which we find out in the autopsy scene later, which is my favorite scene of the entire movie. That, um, bro, that shit was crazy because I, that, I, I just that, thought there was one creature until then. Me too. Mm -hmm. Me too, me too, me too, me too. And um, I had no idea. And that's when I was texting you and I was like, yo, this siege, like, I don't I actually couldn't even tell, mm -hmm. but like, I don't like the CGI or like the practical effects of this. I think they yeah. did a great job of mixing the two in there because right. that autopsy scene, I couldn't tell, but I, that must have been so hard. To, like when she was stuck in inside, mm -hmm. and like first of all, I couldn't that dad or the father, whoever owned that land, that dude. Um, oh shit, my charger's my. Can you get my charger from upstairs, please? <laughs> oh, sorry, oh, but uh, my laptop's about to die. Um, I couldn't really tell, like, uh, what they did there, but it looked great. Like the when she was coming out, and he was like, "You got a fucking shooter," like you know, you um, yeah, we're gonna, yeah, yeah. He's like, "You got." He was like, and she was, and the guy was like, "I can't. I, I'm not doing that. I'm not fucking shoot." Like he's like, "She'll never be the same again." Dude. Yeah, yeah. Like there's you no way to save her. You got to, and I, I mean, he did it, and then the one dude was like. You, you know, and he was telling him, "You got to go back to where this person was buried." You got to, yeah. and, he, and um, the old guy was like, "Sorry, I don't know the names very well." Uh, I don't. I didn't follow the characters' names as well in this one. I yeah. know Seamus yeah. was the dad. I know John was um, the you. the guy they brought in, but <clears throat> to uh, and, obviously well, help excavate the care. No, the guy was but, like, "I'm not. What what am I supposed to tell these people or whatever?" And the guy was like, "Just tell them the truth." He goes. That's crazy. Like what? Are, like what are people? This is crazy. Like obviously, like they didn't want to scare people, which is yeah. beyond me, by the way. So, yeah. I mean, I would rather. I think I would rather know as a townsperson that some shit is some like some weird shit is happening, like yeah. a werewolf. Yeah, like, and it's also uh, there were questions I had when I was watching it, where like when the maid gets bit later, and I'm like, why yeah. wouldn't you come back and? tell somebody why wouldn't you tell somebody you got bit and to find out that 
they turn into a werewolf. They yeah. get infected oh. with the roots. The roots are like inside of them, which we see with like the very first attack with the young, young kid, right? Which, when you walk in his room. Also kind of confusing at first, right? Yeah. Because it because it is a werewolf movie. And then mm-hmm. but when you see the people who get bit or whatever, it's almost like they're kind of um, uh, like spiders. Yeah. Right? Because you see the things coming out of their back. Yeah, like, like turning, like it's it's morphing into, it's basically making like a capsule around them that yeah. is the werewolf and they're just inside of it. Yeah. Like, which is what, which I guess it's how they wanted to rope the scarecrow in. Like, cause you have the scene with the woman in the lake that gets pulled under yeah. by all the stuff and she turns into a werewolf, which um, gets captured by John and that awesome trap that he does. Uh, which oh, that was, was a good look at it. Incredible. Like right before the, like it was, and he was, it was like it, great baiting, right? Like that was, uh, yeah. the men. And, um, but I will say though, as far as the scarecrow goes, I thought it was cheap. Like I didn't, I didn't really fuck with the scarecrow, especially there, like towards like the middle beginning ish when he does like that weird, like he does that head turn. Yeah. It was also in the trailer when he did that. And I thought that was dope. But in the movie, I thought it was just a cheap scare. I think it was supposed to just be their nightmares, because like that's leading up to when they're saying they're they're dreaming about the scarecrow. Yeah. Which I think that I think the scarecrow was used too much. Like, he looks like Slender Man when he's got his arms around uh, John's family and stuff. And I'm like, that's a little too much. Yeah. But so, he does. But he is creepy. Yeah. It, is, it looks good, scene. right? It looks good. Like it looks good. It's just I just thought it was a little cheap. Um, yeah. What did you think of this movie? Obviously, like, because I don't think I we we never talked about like your thoughts. Mm-hmm. So, the the period piece part, I, I'm a sucker for period pieces. I love The Witch, The Lighthouse, like everything that's come out like that recently. I'm really excited about The Northmen. Those are just some recent thoughts. Um, so, I was excited about it. I watch, I was watching it, and Madison and I watched it together, and it was it had my attention. So it's slow. It's a slow burn, but it did enough throughout to keep my attention. And then when I had like an hour left, there was enough that happened in that last hour that it didn't like squeeze everything at the end. So I liked that the scarecrow, like I said, I thought was used too much. The cursing of the land and everything, like the setup was great. They used uh, John, uh, the main character. Uh, I'm gonna call him the main character. They used him in a, in a way where he's seen like a murderous beast like this before, right? And he's like, you have to call in the army. And so, and he's, then he has a confrontation with Seamus towards the end where he's talking about he's when he tells him to leave after like he um, is like, where's the maid? And Seamus is like, John, you have to leave like first thing in the morning or leave now. <clears throat> and he's like, no, I'm not leaving because that's when all this shit's happening. And so I appreciate that because he's like, he calls Seamus a monster almost. And I'm like, y'all at least put some thought into like these premises. Like you didn't just, you didn't just throw a werewolf out there and say, this is enough to make this movie. People care about this movie. So I really like that. I like the whole third act. The third act is probably my favorite part of the movie. There's a lot of good shots in there. But the third act was why I really liked it. Like the werewolf stuff, something I didn't like was when the werewolf was attacking people outside of when he attacked John for the trap, which I thought was a really good visual of him like lunging at him. The rest of the attack scenes, uh, you got a little glimpse of the werewolf. And then he would attack and it'd just be blurry, like cuts back and forth. And then it would randomly go slow-mo or like shifting. And then the, like, it'd be good gore and good practical effects. But like, it was just, some of those were hard to, like I was watching and I was like, I wish they would have shown a little more of, or shown that in a different way, I should say. So they yeah. Showed, they showed enough. Uh, but I liked it. Um, the ending felt, that it was like a dark ending to me with uh, the Seamus, the father ends up, uh, killing himself so he doesn't ha- and in the fire he lights himself on fire so he doesn't have to face everything that's happening when he sees yeah. the maid has turned um the mother trying to protect her son that is a werewolf at the end um and then we haven't talked about one important piece so i'll kind of transition to that but bullets like unless they kill the monster or the werewolf shoot the person that's inside of them to kill that person ultimately the only way to kill a werewolf is with a silver bullet, right? Yeah. So it's like, so we we need to expand on that a little bit because the whole time, like, so the beginning of the movie, 
they're pulling bullets out of the soldier before they do the 30 years back. And, and they they're like, this them. isn't, this isn't from, uh, this isn't yeah. from whatever. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 So going real, real far to the ending, they, she was protecting her son as the werewolf. The mother was because she thought if they shoot him with the silver bullet, he's werewolf dies and he dies mm -hmm. where really it killed the werewolf and it freed him of the curse. And now it makes me curious is when they pulled the, the bullet out of the person of the, the kid 30 years later, it, is yeah, he now cursed again. Is he cursed again? Was well, the bullet was the bullet keeping him from turning back into a werewolf? That's my question. So, wait. Do you think that, you was think that was a kid? A, yeah, that was the young young kid. That was the kid. Oh shit! That they pulled the bullet out of the one that gets shot at the end. Yeah, with the silver bullet and is laying there, and his mom is dead because she tried to protect him, but he's there. That's him. No, I'm, I'm talking about. The, I meant the beginning. Like the, the yeah, they got the soldier. They pull the bullet out of is no. the kid at the end. That is the kid. Oh, because they were because they were. Oh, wow. That's why he survived because he got shot with a silver bullet. Yeah, and so uh, so that was my. I don't know if there's an answer to that. I just thought that was a very interesting like thing. That yeah, off. yeah, because I mean they were like this wasn't from this war or whatever. Like none of us. That's not from them. I yeah. wonder if it was supposed to be like that. We're like, oh shit, like. So that's why I'm thinking, like, is the, are they still on that land, or is it the person being cursed? That's why I had that question, too. I would imagine that it's the land, though, right? Because, I mean, if that's what I'd they – I'd have to go watch. Like, I'm almost – because, like, I will curse – we will curse this land for all of eternity or some shit like that. Like it or, was, or maybe just – that's why I thought people were seeing the scarecrows because they were – like, they were related to yeah. the fam the, the settlers that took the land. Oh, uh, see, I was seeing – I was actually think like the way I was thinking is like they were seeing a scarecrow because they lived there. So it's like I was, I was like that's why in my mind the whole time I was like, yo, if this is really happening. Why don't y'all just move? That's what everyone says in every horror movie, Justin. And that shit never works. Yeah, why don't you just move. Shit never works. Yeah, paranormal yeah. activity move. Move. Nope. Sinister move. Did that work? work? No. Insidious <laughs> did yeah. work. Yeah, yeah. I, I go on and on. None of that shit worked. Yeah. They would have uh, moved to some suburb and you would have had a werewolf running down into a subdivision. That would have been terrible. Yeah, that yeah, was so terrible. Instead of like open land. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. But um, I did love one of my, I, while we're getting close to wrapping up, um, I want to mention, and I'll let you go first, actually, if you want, what is your favorite scene or just moment of this movie? Like what caught your attention? So there were two. Um, it was definitely the, the, the chopping at the beginning. That was definitely like, and to me, these are the most memorable, right? Like mm -hmm. it's, uh, the, the chopping of the gypsy because I thought it was super like, like it was, I hadn't seen it before. Mm -hmm. Me personally, like, I don't, I mean, you may have, but I'd never seen anybody like, not that way. yeah. So, and the, uh, when the scene we mentioned earlier is when you started seeing, I think, oh, fuck, what's her name? Mary Ann, Mary something. But the woman that was inside the werewolf and they finally realized that. that uh, That's a cool scene. Yeah. Those are probably two most memorable for me. Um, That's fine. What about you? I'll, I'll give it to you also, only because one of them is that autopsy scene also. Yeah. Um, just the practical effects and her like coming out of the world from like screaming and like still, you can still see something. Through her face. Yeah. yeah. So she's like whitewashed, like, and then also when they shoot her and it like just basically blows half her head off. It was like that, just the mix of CGI, if that was used or if that was, however they did that. Which by the way, I do want to say, like, I was like, when that happened, I was like, oh, it's done. That's yeah. it. It's over. Nope. Multiple yeah, yeah. infected. Multiple infected. That was also one of my favorite things about this movie is it wasn't like, there's just a werewolf running around. Like there was yeah. a there was a, a spawning of the werewolves and like you getting bit or like getting caught by the scarecrow. There were several ways they did the scarecrow thing being a little weird. Um, but the other thing I really loved was when the older kid, the one that dug up the fangs and everything, his death scene when um, the werewolf runs by him and attacks him and you don't really see anything. You see a blur and then he looks down at his hand 
and his hands like broken off, dangling, and just like oh, basically yeah. fractured off. And now he didn't freak out as much as I thought he should have. Um, but the, when that happened, I look up and they show his hand. I'm like, oh, I, I freaked out more than I think he did. Yeah, and I think like I don't know, maybe like adrenaline or something. Being in shock. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, but those were my favorite. Um, like like I said, like the only things I really didn't like about this were. Um, some of those attack scenes just being a little more blurry um, and like just how they were shot is a little different than what I was yeah. thinking and the scarecrow being used in the way I, it's cool. Like it was, it was the setup was a very effective way to set him up with the chopping off of the limbs and stuff. But uh, I would have been perfectly happy if, if we just got the curse and the werewolf. Honestly. Yeah. I, I love the gore. <clears throat> the gore was great. Right. Yeah. So they did a good job. Like blood, like you see, Blood flashes, you see a lot of handprints of blood throughout. Like they they made it look like if somebody was actually like cut up and bleeding, like what the effects yeah. of that would be walking around, like leaving blood marks and stuff like that. I agree. Um right. should we well, get into this pillar point system, my guy? Yes, I just pulled it up actually. So I had a feeling you did. I had yeah. a feeling. Yeah. Do you want and, to kick it off or do you want me yeah, to? Yeah, I'll go. Uh terrifi- I see that's a thing too, right? It's like so to me, it wasn't that scary. Like it was, like it was, like it was all right. Like, um, I remember that like a two, and then so uh, cohesiveness and their total touch. I thought the story was pretty cohesive, but when you're talking about the directorial touch here, you were like you said you were talking about the blurriness of like the the the, the werewolf there, and like things like that. The acting was great. Emotional investment. Like I I was I was pretty invested, which I'm not really. Emotionally, I which I wasn't emotionally invested in Moon Knight episode one. We had a whole we had a <laughs> preface this, we had all arguing about what emotionally invested means. And I, I I tried to put Justin on the spot saying, yeah. Oh, so you're not emotionally invested in Ethan Hawk. Yeah. Uh you hear my son cry, probably. Uh and the storyline was like it was okay. Like, you know, it wasn't bad. Like I don't think it was um like it like it wasn't like groundbreaking but it wasn't like it wasn't stupid like so yeah. I, I think overall as a whole man i think i'd give it a three okay yeah. okay uh, i'm glad you said that because i think i liked it a little more than you yeah. um but but also i want everyone to know justin was more excited about this movie than i was like, i was excited about it uh but i was not in any rush to watch it i, was. I wanted was, and like same thing like i want i can't wait to get into black phone Yep, so we had a little flip happen. So I'm going to talk uh, – directorial touch, I appreciated it because it's not easy to shoot a late 1800s set movie with no, natural no. lighting. Um, some of those wide shots I was talking about, a little, little downgrade because of the, the blurry shots, like I guess the attack scenes and just how they were limited was had to be done a certain way or maybe that was the vision of the director. So that's whatever they decided to do. That's the pros. That's the cons. Storyline, like you said, I thought it was very unique. Something I wasn't expecting. The werewolf story definitely wasn't expecting. How they got to it, very cool. Wasn't just a werewolf that was living in the woods. You know, yeah. that's what you usually get. So I like that cohesiveness. I felt, I felt it did a good job, but I felt like it could have done better. I got, I, I enjoyed it. There were lulls throughout, which it's a slow burn. Um, yeah. The last hour it did. It did just kind of feel like the pacing was a little, a little off. But that was just me watching it. But I did like, like it kept my attention. It yeah. Just, I, would go, I would go 15 minutes of like really into it, and then five minutes of like. Which was crazy. Which, by the way, I before I sorry to interrupt. Before I forget it, the because I meant to mention this earlier was, and I think that's what was in my mind, which I forgot was, uh, the, the beginning made it almost seem like it wasn't going to be a slow burn. Yeah. And then it, but then it ended up being one because it was, it was kind of action packed at the beginning, started off in the war and like these, I don't know, colonians, is that a word? Like these slow. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like it was like, it it seemed like it was going to be action packed from beginning. Yeah. Yeah, So exactly. So that's how I felt like the pacing was a little, a little, a little off to me, but still enjoyed it. Terror Factor, I wasn't super scared. 
um, there's one Madison and I were watching. She's like, this is one I would, could watch like in bed without closing my eyes. So, and it's not scaring her. And I wasn't very scared. Like yeah. it had good, it had good jump moments. Like, but the, the horror was anticipated. You kind of knew when the werewolf was lurking and stuff like that. It wasn't a ton of jump scenes and everything like that, which it's is fine. Mu- it's because of the music. Yeah. It's so the way, the way they cued it, but yeah. Yeah. So overall I would give it a, Give it a 3.5. I was going between 3.5 and 3.75. Um, I want to watch it again, and maybe it will creep up to that 3.75, but I've watched it once. I think have we given good. quarter points before? Uh, yeah, 0.25. Yeah, we have. 100%. We've even said to Oakley last episode you could do quarter points if you want, and then he just didn't understand our point system by any means <laughs> <laughs> while we were doing that. Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, so three. I'll call it three five. I enjoyed it. Oh, I, rec- I recommend people go see it if you are interested in an original story. If you haven't seen it already and you listen to all of this, then you're a special person because we just did all these spoilers. Yeah, I I really do feel like I would have liked it more if I didn't have higher expectations of the movie. I just think that the trailer made it look like it was gonna be like just fucking spectacular. I feel you. Yeah, I feel so, you. yeah it, we didn't know much from the trailer, which I think is the exciting. Yeah. Movie. And like the same thing, kind of like, and I'm hoping Black Phone isn't like that, you know. Mm-hmm. So, Black Black Phone is interesting because I kind of feel like I know what that's going to be about, so I'm curious what the curveballs are going to be. You feel me? Yeah. For this one, this one, I think we both went opposite directions. You were super excited. The movie came out. You watched it, and your hype level went this, and then my hype level when I saw it was a werewolf story went like this. Um, yeah, mine kind of just leveled out. Yeah. So. But that's my rating, 3-5. Justin got the 3-0, um, which I thought you were going 2-5, to be honest. Um, yeah. But, but it fits in the meh category, 3-0. Yeah. It was just mid, you know what I'm saying? And um, should I tell you, Black Phone, did you know that it was pushed back to June? Yeah, we found that out on one of our other episodes. Yeah, I forgot. Like, But I didn't realize it was that far. Yeah, it's pretty far up. Yeah. Yeah. So. June. But we got that to eventually cover. I want to cover X. Um, so be on the lookout. I want to cover X. Um, it's super cheap on FOD now, so we need to do it because I've been meaning to do it. But The Dark and the Wicked, um, that movie, I don't know if you ever got around to that, but I may buy that. And if I do, you can just watch it on my Fudu. Uh, okay. That shit is dope. I want to watch it again. We got some other stuff in the works, though. Um, but thank you all for joining us. That's yeah. the Curse 2022. We are hyped about this, and you can see from our evaluations how we felt. And – um. Uh, we just uh, be prepped. I think we'll probably do a couple more of these like this. Just uh, until maybe, just till the baby is set. Yeah. So, I mean, like I'm good, mm-hmm. I did, but he can't leave. Like, but I mean, I have another person helping, so like he can't leave the baby. I mean, the puppy. Um, but yeah. like, um, but I've, I could probably. I don't know. We'll talk. But I could probably come over there and bring the banner. Maybe we could. There. Yeah, so, that. yeah, so uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, we'll see how this, I guess, pans out. But maybe, maybe we will do a couple more like this. Maybe we won't. But. Yeah, only maybe a few, but we're hoping to get some more content out. So, yeah, yeah. peace love out, guys. As always, peace and love. Thank y'all.